Hello students, welcome to the online course on Photon Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. So, today's lecture we will have a simulation demonstration of uh, topological photonic crystals based waveguide. So, the entire simulation demonstration will be shown in two different uh, software. So, today in uh, the first part, that is why we are calling it as part 1 will be actually showing you the demonstration using a popular uh, software which is Comsol Multiphysics. Okay. And uh, in the next one, we will show you using another uh, popularly used software which is CST Microwave Studio Suite. Okay. So, here uh, the main idea is to give you some uh, hands on experience. So, we will be talking about terahertz topological based waveguide schematic slabs. So, these are also photonic crystal slabs as we have discussed throughout our course. So, here you will see that we will be mainly focusing on the three major aspects. The first one will be how to obtain the dispersion diagram for the unit cell. Then, um, how to obtain the topological edge states okay, in the dispersion diagram and then finally, we will go for the simulation of the complete waveguide structure. So, for realizing a topological based waveguide, we will basically require all the simulation steps which are the basic requirements. So, now if you consider any uh, periodic system it can have these two types of uh, unit cell representation. So, you can think of a rhombic unit cell that is used. So, you can start with this point being uh, the origin 0 0 and uh, this one will be minus a comma 0. This point is minus a comma root 3 a by 2 and this point being minus a by 2 comma root 3 a by 2. Okay. So, this particular distance is basically root 3a by 2. What is a here? a is basically the lattice periodicity. You can also um, consider this another representation that is a hexagonal unit cell. So, hexagonal unit cell you can draw like a um, rectangle which has got the length of a and the width of a by root 3 and then you take this rectangle and uh, rotate it uh, by plus one eight, 120 degree, you will get this rectangle okay. and then you rotate it, rotate this uh, horizontal lying rectangle by minus 120 degree, you will get this particular rectangle. So, when you add up all these three rectangles, you basically get this hexagonal unit cell. Right? So, here, we will first consider the unit cell which has got two inverted asymmetric triangles. As you can see, the triangles, these are like equilateral triangles. So, every side is of equal length, but this guy, um, the length is L1 and this one, the length is L2. Okay? So, L1 was taken to be 0.65A and L2 was taken to be 0.35A. What is A? A is the lattice periodicity, it, it is taken to be 2 point, oh sorry, 242.5 micrometer in this particular example. Now, we have uh, kindly um, go through the earlier simulation of uh, the topological photonic uh, insulators. You will see that for the k vector sweep, we require these two conditions, okay, alpha and beta for different ranges of uh, k. Okay? So, these basically are the conditions given for the wave vector k that will be used for sweeping the irreducible brilliant zone. That means, um, we have to go from, um, okay, this has to be corrected, it is from, from gamma to m to k to gamma and so on. So, this is the rhombus uh, geometry unit cell that you have seen. This is basically taken by connecting the centers of the four hexagons as you can see here. Okay. So, if you can put the triangular shapes 
okay, as geometric holes which are basically etched from the rhombus shape silicon structure, you basically get one type of unit cell. Okay. So, this is the symmetric design with, where you have the two triangular holes to be of equal size. So, in that case, there will be no band gap. So, the band gap will close at the K point of the brilliant zone. But in case if you introduce asymmetry, means one you keep as it is, but one hole, triangular hole, you shrink in size. In that case, the band gap opens up and an edge state will appear inside the band gap and that will allow the propagation. Okay. So, we will call this type where the larger uh, triangular hole is on the top okay, and the smaller one at the bottom, we can call this as unit cell 1 okay, or you can say this is VPC type A. Okay, VPC is basically valley photonic crystal. Okay, and if you flip this design, okay, you, if you take a mirror of this design, okay, that, that is where the smaller triangle will come closer to the smaller triangle. Okay, this particular unit cell can be named as unit cell 2, that is valley photonic crystal B. Okay, so what why we need to do this when you have these two types of uh, unit cells making a boundary, you are getting an interface, and this is where the topological edge states can propagate through. Now, to check the presence of the edge states, we will perform simulations of the supercell array structure of the unit cell design. So, you take the unit cell. Uh, like this and then repeat four of this okay so you you can mark this box okay that is basically the supercell that can be extended infinitely and you can um, get the characteristics of the first one any one type of the photonic uh, crystal cells like this one so we are just considering this case say you, you have VPCA, you have taken four cells of VPCA and then you can actually arrange this uh, supercell structure in the form of an array of strip. Okay. Why we do that? You, if you do that, uh, you can use the eigenvalue simulation for the wave vector K in COMSOL multiphysics software and that will give you the edge states. So, you will be basically calculating for all these different points. So, this is the gamma point, then this is the k, k prime, k, k prime, k and k prime and so on. So, these are basically coming from those different um, adjacent uh, cells. Okay. So, these are the important points for which you have to calculate, you have to do the eigenvalue simulation to obtain the edge state. So, all these things we will be seeing in the video demonstration that I will be showing you right now. Okay. So, I will show you the video demonstration using um, COMSOL multiphysics and that will cover all those different aspects that we have discussed. So, it will show you how the dispersion diagram of the unit cells are obtained, how the topological edge states are calculated and then we will go for the simulation of complete waveguide structure. Okay. So, our TA for the course, Dibaskar Vishwas, will take you through this particular video demonstration and that will give you a complete idea how you can go ahead from the scratch to design topological photonics based web guides. Hello students. Uh, so, this will be uh, our demonstration uh, video, the part one uh, for the uh, simulation of um, um, topological photonics based uh, um, uh, the waveguides basically uh, in the actually uh, terahertz frequency uh, region. Uh, so basically uh, in this uh, demonstration actually uh, this uh, uh, simulation demonstration is of actually two parts. Uh, so in the first part actually we will be uh, uh, 
uh, watching uh, will be actually doing the analysis of the band diagram of the unit cell and also the uh, f state analysis uh, or the f state dispersion diagram uh, of the um, of the same that is the of the same design whatever unit cell design uh, we'll be discussing here so we shall be uh, discussing uh, we'll be analyzing uh, two main things here in the first part so in the uh, second part uh, uh, so uh, here in the first part uh, the, the software that we'll be using it is commercially uh, available uh, console uh, software and uh, in the second part actually we will be uh, designing the waveguide structure uh, uh, based on the topological value photonic crystals and based on that we shall be uh, analyzing the transmission analysis uh, we shall be doing the transmission analysis of that uh, entire um, photonic crystal slab structure and that will be that we will be doing it on the um, cst uh, studio suit uh, so so actually so in uh, in this uh, um, video so as you can see that i have opened uh, the uh, console software and you can see that after uh, clicking on the console software uh, it will show you uh, this interface this is a kind of inter first uh, the opening interface of the console so you can see that uh, in the top left corner, uh, you can see that uh, here um, uh, this uh, model wizard and uh, blank model two options are there. So blank model is generally uh, it's not required actually. It is for uh, more advanced applications, advanced designing uh, for uh, building uh, applications actually, application oriented um, actually designing. So we don't require this for our uh, purpose. Only model wizard actually uh, uh, is required. So we'll be clicking on this model wizard. Now you can see that uh, there are many interfaces uh, of console. So you need to select the space dimension. So that is in what uh, what will be uh, the space dimension that will be working, whether it is 3D or 2D or 1D or even the uh, zero dimension also. That is the point. So you have uh, the 3D option, first option. Then you are uh, you have. Uh, the 2D um, axis symmetry that is uh, along the across the z-axis. Then you have the uh, conventional 2D uh, uh, space dimension. Then also then you have the 1D uh, axis symmetry. Then you have the conventional 1D and the 0D. So uh, for our uh, for our uh, purpose, uh, so we actually do the uh, band diagram analysis of the unit cell uh, for the uh, 2D uh, actually structure. Uh, so for the 2D uh, uh, unit cell, we will be doing all the analysis. That is uh, for the that is the uh, dispersion diagram of the unit cell or the band diagram, and also the dispersion diagram of the edge states. Uh, uh, so both will be uh, done on the on the 2D platform. So we will be clicking here on this uh, 2D option here. Now after clicking here, uh, so after selecting the space dimension, so now console will be uh, asking for selecting the physics. So physics is an important tool uh, because uh, whatever uh, analysis, whatever uh, simulation you will be doing uh, on a particular space dimension or on a particular uh, after selecting the space dimension, you will be requiring the physics. That is, uh, that is every um, uh, simulation that you perform. Uh, so on the background, actually, uh, what happens is that the source, uh, the software performs some mathematical calculations or mathematical analysis. So this is particularly uh, based on the particular physics that you choose. So that's why uh, here are, you can see in the console, there are a list of uh, physics uh, that are actually there. So right starting from the SE to DC, then acoustics, then the chemical species, uh, transport, electrochemistry, fluid flow, heat transfer, a lot of uh, physics interfaces are there. So for our purpose, we actually uh, select this uh, radio frequency. We expand this uh, option. And then on the third option, you can see that is the electromagnetic waves frequency domain, that is the EMW. So we require this uh, physics interface. So we click here. And then in the add button, we click the add button to add our uh, physics interface on this blank window. So after, as you can see that now in the, after clicking, after adding this, it will show the electric field components. That is the EX, UI, EZ. So uh, we are working on the, uh, so that is the possible uh, electric field components uh, that will be uh, doing the analysis uh, here for this particular physics. 
so after adding the physics we shall be uh, quickly moving uh, to the next part that is the study so we'll be clicking on the study button and then you can see that there are many sort of uh, uh, analysis uh, options are there so in our case actually we need to do the eigen uh, frequencies uh, analysis that is because uh, we are actually required to find the dispersion uh, diagram and dispersion diagram is nothing but the plot between the eigen frequencies that eigen frequencies is nothing but the allowed modes inside that particular structure okay so whatever units we will be designing there will be certain allowed uh, uh, the modes uh, the, or the frequencies that will be that will be allowed by the structure so these are known as the eigen frequencies uh, so this dispersion diagram is the actually the plot between the eigen frequencies versus the uh, the wave vector that is the k vector or the wave vector in the uh, structure okay so this uh, study will be the uh, eigen frequency so we will be uh, selecting this uh, study here and after uh, selecting this we you go to the bottom part and then this done option click the done option here and it will take few seconds here so you can see that this is the typical interface uh, of the uh, console uh, so this graphics is the working area where you can visualize your design and then this is the model builder where you can see some uh, specific uh, interfaces actually have been set up uh, by default so you can see that in the global definition you have the parameter where you will be defining all the parameters which are necessary for your design and uh, then in the geometry option under the component section so uh, you will be uh, defining all the blocks or the polygon or whatever it is uh, so you will, will be basically will be designing our uh, model here then after uh, designing the model we will be moving to the material part where we will be adding the material okay uh, uh, for the structure and then um, in the physics under the physics we will be um, doing uh, we'll be making all the changes we'll be actually uh, inserting the boundary conditions here uh, that we'll see it later on and then after filling after doing all this we go step by step so we go down and we can see this mesh so meshing is actually a very important uh, uh, aspect uh, for a particular uh, for all these actually um, uh, simulations uh, why because uh, what actually meshing is meshing does actually uh, in the simulation so uh, probably uh, you all have uh, studied about the maxwell's equation uh, in the electromagnetic field theory so what maxwell equation does is that it gives us uh, the, uh, the 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 core it correlates the uh, the time varying electric field with the time varying magnetic field actually uh, so that is the last two equations so these maxwell equations that we uh, read in the uh, in our textbook these are all for the um, the infinite uh, infinite cases that is we are considering an infinite simul infinite simile uh, uh, that is uh, infinitely big or we can see that for a continuous body okay for continuous structures uh, we are actually uh, in using those uh, equations that's why you can see that these are the integral the maxwell's are uh, equations are in the integral form or the or the or in the del form but uh, when whenever we are dealing with practical structures like the discrete uh, actually structures which have finite size so they are actually the maxwell equations take the discrete form so in the discrete form what the software does is that it actually breaks down what meshing actually does uh, here that it breaks down uh, that particular uh, structure uh, whatever it is it be it your uh, 2d structure or the uh, 3d structure so it uh, breaks down your uh, structure into a very small uh, finite component and what it does is that it for that particular small component for each component it will solve the maxwell equations uh, using all the necessary boundary conditions and whatever result it will uh, it will get uh, it will store it in a particular matrix and then the further analysis actually uh, the software does so that is how actually a meshing becomes an important aspect because if you do coarse mesh coarse means uh, uh, the meshing is not of high quality uh, so if the meshing quality is not high then it will produce um, error in your results and uh, if the meshing quality is very high so obviously we will get very good result but uh, the simulation uh, time will computation time actually will increase drastically so so that actually sums up the importance of uh, the meshing uh, in the simulation so after uh, doing the uh, uh, the meshing part uh, 
uh, we'll be moving to the study part here where we'll be doing the parametric analysis of the uh, wave vector k so i already actually in the previous lectures i already showed one demonstration of uh, photonic crystal slab where actually creating the defect uh, line defect we uh, showed the uh, we designed a waveguide and we showed the band diagram there where actually uh, i showed there uh, the how um, the brilliant the irreducible uh, how the k vector uh, is actually swept uh, across the uh, irreducible brilliant zone so here also the, uh, the actually uh, the concept is actually basically same so the same concept actually uh, applies here but uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, new things uh, to be learned here so i shall be discussing all of that uh, so uh, after so we'll be uh, in the study part uh, we'll be doing the parametric uh, simulation of the wave vector here and uh, uh, then after that we'll be going to the eigen frequency option and in the eigen frequency option we'll be choosing the desired number of eigen frequencies so we'll be just keeping it uh, we'll be restricting ourselves to only two eigen frequencies uh, so uh, that is only the first band and the second band because we need to, we just need to see whether uh, for the symmetric case whether it is uh, meeting at at k equals to uh, 2 that is the uh, k symmetry point and after breaking the symmetry whether it is creating the band gap or not and then uh, search for eigen frequencies will be typically keeping it at uh, 1 gigahertz only so 1 gigahertz uh, 1 1 is the uh, actually uh, default value uh, for, for the comsol actually for the eigen mode solver and gigahertz is the unit because uh, we'll be uh, basically uh, it's actually the terahertz range but uh, it is uh, in the of the range of 250 to 350 gigahertz so that's why uh, we call, we are taking the unit as uh, gigahertz actually and um, this will be uh, the eigen frequency search method uh, we'll keep it as larger real part uh, because if we take other values options here so the complex eigen values uh, actually will appear and that will give uh, error in our analysis so that is pretty much about uh, the basic uh, interface of the console here so now we shall be um, uh, defining all the parameters for designing the unit cell here. Uh, so uh, first we, sh we shall be uh, starting with the lattice periodicity. So that is the uh, your uh, uh, the lattice periodicity is your uh, A actually. Uh, so we'll be defining here that is 242.5. Uh, then you give third bracket, then you in place of micro, so micro symbol uh, is, is actually replaced by U, is uh, denoted by U here in console, then micrometer M, and close the third bracket, and then you click tab on your keyboard, then it will take the uh, value. Description, you might uh, enter it as latest periodicity, or it is not required that much, it is not that much important. So after that, you need to define alpha and beta here. So alpha is basically the if else condition here. So if uh, a uh, less than one, so the value will be uh, your uh, 0 0.5 into k. Else if and then first trigger starts uh, a less than two, then the value will be one by six. 1 by 6 into k uh, plus 2 first bracket closed for that k plus 2 else the final value is 2 by 3 into uh, 3 minus uh, k so bracket close for 3 minus k bracket close for the second if and then bracket close for the final if so you must you need to ensure that all the brackets are getting closed otherwise you will be getting a red symbol just like this so the your entire if else condition will appear red because of some error so if it appears like this you just what you need to do is that you just uh, put the cursor on that if else condition and it will show what is the error so here you see the error is unknown model parameter parameter k so uh, this is because we have not defined k so that that is why console is actually showing the error so we'll be defining uh, k here but first of all let me uh, define alpha and beta and then we'll be uh, defining the k uh, accordingly uh, so for k less than one so it is actually pretty much same let's see if uh, k less than 
two, then it is I think uh, one by six. One by six into four minus k. Or else uh, the final value will be this by three into three minus k. Okay, now we shall be defining k here. You just give any arbitrary value, zero uh, point one. So it will take now. See the red. Uh, color on the statement. The red statement has actually turned black, so it means that our uh, the error has actually uh, we uh, removed that error. OK, then you need to define K naught here. So it is your 4 into pi divided by uh, a straight square root of P uh, uh, into A. OK, fine. Then you will define AX here, so it will be alpha uh, into K naught um, into square root of 3 uh, divided by 2. Okay, so, and then accordingly QI, QI will be your K naught into uh, beta uh, minus, and then again bracket 0 0.5 into alpha. Okay. Then you define your L1 and your L2 here. Okay, so what is your L1 and L2? That uh, will be just uh, let me define all those points here. M, M is um, square root of 3 into L1 by 2. Then n is your uh, square root of e, uh, into L2 by 2. And uh, your then uh, P. P is your A divided by square root of 3. And then Q is divided by uh, square root of 3 into A by 6. So you might wonder, you might be wondering that uh, why I have defined all these things. Uh, so L1 and L2, you can see it from the uh, the presentation, uh, the, the PPT file itself. So you can see that this is the rhombus unit cell. These are all the coordinates here of the rhombus that will be inserting all, all will be uh, defining the rhombus in the console. And uh, L1 is the uh, length uh, or the side of the big triangle, equilateral triangle, and L2 is the side of the small equilateral triangle. So this rhombus will be filled with silicon, and these two triangles will be the uh, triangular holes. So we'll be filling those uh, triangles with air. Okay. And these are the alpha conditions actually. So how we are actually getting these alpha equations uh, that I have explained it in detail uh, in uh, in the uh, photonic crystal uh, slab, uh, I think uh, in the photonic crystal uh, dielectric photonic uh, waveguide actually. Uh, so in that uh, uh, lecture series, I actually also showed the demonstration of how uh, the line defect, uh, using line defect, we can create a waveguide. So there uh, I have explained in details uh, regarding how, uh, from where this alpha and beta are coming. And also the uh, regarding the uh, the and uh, the complete brillouin zone and also the irreducible brillouin zone, so all these things are there. Uh, so uh, after this define after uh, defining here, uh, so we will be moving to the uh, geometry section. So in the geometry section, uh, an important thing to uh, note here is that the length unit. So you change it to micrometer, otherwise uh, some error might be there. OK, so you expand the geometry here and then you uh, go to the geometry on the top and then you click uh, polygon here. OK, so you name it as uh, rhombus. So put uh, the coordinates here accordingly. Minus a uh, zero and minus one point uh, five into a. OK. Uh, square root of g into a by two. Minus 0 0.5 into A. Uh, 
and you hit build all objects. Now you can see in the top there is called zoom extent. So if you click it, it will zoom out your figure. So you can see this is the rhomba structure. Uh, this is not a this is just a closed curve structure. This is not a solid one. So for solid one, you can see that the sketch option is uh, on here. So you just click it and uh, off it. So you will be coming out of the sketch mode. And see now you will be getting the uh, solid structure, rhombus structure. So I have only all all uh, I have inserted all the coordinates of the rhombus. So these are the coordinates are already there actually. And A is the lattice periodicity. So after uh, designing the rhombus, you click now you have to design the two triangular holes. So so basically the two triangles. So you need again polygon, and you write here big triangle. I need to uh, enter the coordinates of the triangle. So it's a bit tricky one because we don't have, we directly don't have all uh, the uh, the triangle option uh, here uh, in the console, and we simply cannot uh, draw a, a line and then uh, rotate it uh, twice to get an equilateral triangle. That that is also a difficult process, and it will not give uh, proper uh, equilateral triangle. Also, also you need to keep in mind that. Uh, uh, that uh, this uh, you can see two uh, there are two uh, midpoints. So one midpoint actually uh, its distance from the base of the rhombus is a by root three, and another midpoint its distance from the base of the rhombus is root three by six. So we need to ensure that whatever triangle you are designing here, so its midpoint uh, should should be one of those two midpoints. Okay, so for big one. So this will be big triangle. This will be this. This is the midpoint, and for small triangle, this will be the midpoint, and vice versa for uh, the VPC uh, unit cell B. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so to to get such kind of uh, accurate uh, geometry, so it's uh, um, a bit uh, difficult. Uh, so there are not uh, so there are not uh, so easy process that you can directly uh, get the equilateral triangle. So we will go by uh, the coordinate uh, uh, um, method here. So we know that um, in the uh, equilateral, the, the midpoint actually, uh, so the midpoint uh, behaves as the centroid of the equilateral triangle and it uh, divides the perpendicular bisector. So if I go into the this presentation mode and uh, if I use a pen, so this is uh, typically your equilateral triangle here, and uh, this will be the perpendicular line. So there, this this is the centroid. So this is two by three of this L, and this is your one third of L. Okay, and this is the entire L is this. And you know this entire L, this is nothing but your root 3 A by 2, where A is your side length of the equilateral triangle. OK, so uh, this is the centroid point here, and uh, this is the OK. Uh, so this is this will be the base of the rhombus uh, base length, and from this center uh, to this distance. Uh, yeah, so this is the distance and this is given by a by uh, actually root three here. Uh, so we require three coordinates for the equilateral triangle. So this coordinate, then this coordinate and this coordinate. OK, so for this coordinate, what you need to do is you just simply. Uh, mul uh, subtract this a by root three minus this two third of L. Isn't it? So from there, actually, we will be getting the y coordinate for this point, this distance. And this distance is nothing but the y coordinate of this point. The x coordinate actually is pretty much uh, uh, easy because it is just not, nothing but the minus of a. Okay, so that is uh, how you get. And uh, for these two points, actually, these two points are very uh, now. What will be uh, this? So minus a is the point here, x coordinate. And you move further in the positive direction by an amount a by two. Okay, so it is nothing but your 
minus a plus a by 2 this is the x coordinate and y coordinate will be you just add so your a by root 3 plus okay a by root 3 uh, then plus this distance one third of l okay and then this will uh, this will give the y coordinate of this of this point so similarly the y coordinate of this point will also be same only the x coordinate will change now you have to in place of plus a by 2 you need to go minus a by 2 okay so i think uh, the the coordinate how to get the coordinate uh, it is clear so i will be discarding this and we're going again so you need to now enter all the coordinates here so i have actually already designed that particular thing uh, structure so here in the uh, big triangle part also in the geometry part actually uh, okay yeah so in the geometry part big triangle so what i will do is that so you can see that minus a p minus 2 by 3 m so whatever i have defined here actually p q i have defined here so that's why to make uh, the our an analysis easier because if i go on writing a by root 3 minus 2 third of uh, root 3 l by 2 so this will make it very uh, very lengthy process and it will be time taking so i already assigned uh, the those a by root 3 root 3 by l as variables here and then i have done this analysis uh, so i will be copying all those points here and then i will be taking directly here list so this will be build all objects now see so this is the uh, big triangle here so similarly for a small triangle we will again click uh, polygon here and then
okay and uh, the displacement vector is actually a because uh, it is shifted by a distance of a actually so the the same rhombus will come here and then again move to and select this and then you click build selected uh, now what you do is that displacement you specify positions so your old vertex will be this this is the old vertex so this should move here so that is that is what you are doing is you are shifting this rhombus to the upper portion okay so your vertex final vertex will be this and then you click build selected so you will get the third of uh, the rhombus here the unit cell here and then you click on again move and then you do the same thing so you will get this four kind of structure so which is similar to this thing okay so now you need to make this rectangular box by removing all the un 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 unwanted thing uh, so what you need to do is is that you take line segment in the more primitives option you take click line segment and then you uh, join take the vertex here so this and this and uh, starting vertex and end vertex and then you click build selected and then again line segment okay now what you need to do is that these are all domains so these are called domains actually so you need to divide those domains into uh, you need to uh, separate them so that you can delete those unwanted parts so you go to booleans and partitions and then you click uh, partition domain so you will arrive at this you select entire structure on except these two lines two straight lines vertical lines okay so this is the domain to partition so and what what will be the particular uh, object that you will be doing the partition with so partition width will be the edges that is the two vertical lines so here you select uh, edges and then you select all those uh, two vertical lines and then you click build selected and then here delete option is there you click delete so the delete by default object will come so you click on bound uh, you click on domain domain and then you select this Okay, now see so these domains are have been separated so you select those all those uh, domains and then you click build selected okay so now you are getting this uh, unit cell structure so this is similar to this purple box now what you need to do is that this red line boundary and this red line boundary you need to remove this so what we do is that you first you do the union so in the boolean and partition again you go to uh, union and then you click union here and you just select only those parts not the triangles and you just uh, uh, keep it keep them off keep them unchecked actually uh, keep input objects and keep input boundaries uh, unchecked and then you click build selected so you will be removing that particular uh, boundaries and then again on union 2 you select all those triangles to merge with that particular rectangular box here you keep the interior boundaries at checked uh, otherwise the entire C and that uh, structure will go. So just keep it as like this. Okay, now you make the array. So this you select and then you uh, repeat it in the particle direction. Typically we take it as uh, 15 times and the displacement vector will be your, in the y direction it will be square root of three two. Why? Because this is the rhombus, okay? So the rhombus, height is square root of 3 into a by 2 this is another rhombus so it will be twice of square root of 3 into a by 2 so this 2 2 gets cancelled that is why the displacement is uh, root 3 into a so after clicking this you will get the uh, strip okay in the upward direction now what you need to uh, do is that so this is actually for the entire AB part. This entire strip is of the uh, your VPCA, repetition of VPCA. If you can see this, so this is the big triangle, this is the small triangle, this is the big triangle, this is the small triangle. So this actually gets repeated in the upper direction. So this is because this all four unit cells are VPCA. So in so this is if I take um, like this. Yeah. Yeah, I like so this is your interface okay so beneath that uh, you have to uh, take the vpcb portion so similarly a similar thing will you will do it for vpcb 
like this making four options and then you you remove this take the line and then you remove the unwanted part so this will be uh, a time taking process what shortcut is you just uh, make this super cell and then you flip it okay this will give you the uh, ppc b configuration and that's why after that you do the union so you take all the union of the array and then you take the mirror so you click select this entire array and the mirror the line of reflection so this is important you choose this edge so along this edge mirror mirror analysis will be done see now this up this upper portion is actually the air type and from there this is the interface so this is the interface and from from the from this interface to the bottom the b portion comes so this is basically the ab type ab type uh, estate configuration okay similarly uh, you fill all those triangular holes with air and then this way with uh, silicon then you go to electromagnetic waves and um, in the periodic option so in the periodic option actually you select all those edges don't miss them select all those edges and then you uh, here you define as rocket periodicity kx and ky and you take scattering boundary condition here and uh, and in the top part so in the top part and also in the bottom part to give it as a scattering boundary condition because here periodic condition won't be applied because you have already uh, hit the uh, hit the uh, boundary of your uh, slab structure so this is only a single strip okay and if it uh, now to get the final slab structure uh, what is the basic thing you need to uh, repeat this strip in the uh, right direction in the uh, right hand direction and also in the left hand direction okay you don't need to uh, repeat this strip in the upward and downward direction because already you have uh, hit the extreme of your slab structure so that's why we are using the uh, scattering boundary condition here okay and then after scattering boundary condition all those have been applied uh, you just make sure that this is in plane vector because sometimes three component vector it it stays there by default and then your simulation will not run it will uh, give erroneous results okay so make sure that this is in plane vector is selected and then you go to mesh so in the mesh actually you take physics control and then normal because if you by any chance if you increase it to like finer or extra fine your simulation time will increase drastically so it might take even two days also and also uh, it's not only about the uh, simulation time it, it's it, it is also about the your uh, the how powerful your uh, pc or laptop is so like my operating system is on uh, is uh, running on uh, i5 uh, 12th gen with 16 gb ram that's why uh, it is able to uh, handle uh, uh, that's one, uh, that much amount of mesh here so and even even with that uh, configuration it is uh, taking at around 20 22 uh, hours uh, time so if you have configurations uh, uh, lesser than that so just make sure that you don't uh, you just keep physics control mesh here and you do the analysis in the uh, normal mode okay so after clicking uh, selecting the normal mesh you click build all and in the study option you select this parametric sweep and then you sweep it from minus one to one and the step size is uh, is at 0 0.01 you sweep the k vector and in the eigen frequency analysis you search frequency you keep it as by default larger real part and then in the number of eigen frequencies you take it as 110 i generally take it as 110 uh, it is not uh, a, like uh, a default number you can take it whatever number you want but it should be greater than 100 because uh, if you can if i can show you here uh, let me yeah fine let me show it here so eigen analysis will be coming like this so these are the lower bands so a lot of bands will come okay so a lot of bands will come and these are the upper bands a lot of bands will come and this will be the band gap so inside the band gap such kind of uh, edge state will appear a single line okay a single line will appear and this you can see uh, this will actually confirm that your uh, structure is
psychological behavior okay uh, so for every a b type design this might be the h state so so for b a type b a type will get such kind of opposite uh, characteristics curve okay so why you are getting this opposite here and some interesting phenomenon happens here at, at this point intersecting point and at this intersecting point this will be discussing it so a lot of eigen bands will come so that's why the simulation time takes so much time so that's why you keep the number of eigen frequencies as much higher as you can so that way by default you take it uh, greater than 100 okay and then you uh, click on uh, you go to home and then you click on build all and then build mesh and then you click compute so i have already uh, uh, done the simulation analysis of the edge state and you can see that uh, this is for the AB type, there is the red one and for the BA type. So as I have already told here, you can see at this intersecting point. So this intersecting point are nothing but if you take the exact analysis. So this is the plot in uh, that I have done. So I have extracted the data and I have uh, plotted it in origin. So if you take a single straight line in the origin and you can check the uh, X coordinate, you will get it as minus uh, there is 0.67 and here it is minus 0.67. So you can see that uh, the graphs are actually uh, uh, contrasting in nature. Uh, how it can be visualized if you take the tangent at this point, those the slopes will have uh, will uh, the slopes will have uh, opposite values. OK, equal and opposite values. So this means that for your AB type and for your BA type designs, uh, the, the slope of the curve is given by the group velocity. Uh, so for your uh, this uh, slope, the group velocities actually they are uh, for these two modes. Okay, so for this two type of designs. Okay, for the two type of uh, uh, configuration, the group velocity will be will have actually uh, will uh, the, the, the uh, these two configurations will have uh, opposite group velocities, and that's why uh, they will not uh, couple with each other. So that uh, intervalley mixing. Uh, interval mixing uh, is actually absent here. Why we are calling it as a valley here? Uh, that is because uh, this uh, at this point actually it looks like a valley actually, and this point corresponds to if you can remember this point actually corresponds to uh, k dash, and this point uh, corresponds to k point. So if you go to this, see, so this is k dash is nothing but two pi by three a. That is 0 0.67 pi by a. That's why this point corresponds to K dash and this point corresponds to K. So that's why they are known as K, K valleys, K dash valleys. That's why they are known as um, the valley points. OK, or you can say it as uh, and that's why that is uh, uh, and that's why we call it as intervalley mixing. Intervalley mixing is absent. That's why the propagation losses is also less. And that is the uh, beauty of topological photonics. So and actually I have uh, extracted the data and have pl I have plotted it in origin because that data extraction becomes a, a huge headache actually for this simulation uh, for this topological uh, estate simulation because after finishing if you try to uh, export the data also the data the file size will be typically of the order of uh, 20 to 25 GB. So it's a humongous file and that will not be opened uh, uh, even that is your uh, a default software that is a notepad. It will not be able to uh, open this kind of huge file size. So for that you will be requiring uh, the notepad plus plus. So notepad plus plus actually can open this kind of uh, huge file size and and that also actually it will take uh, a lot of time. It takes around uh, 15 to 20 minutes depending upon your uh, how powerful your CPU is. So uh, uh, in a nutshell actually uh, this uh, Topological edge state analysis is one of the most uh, important also, and it, it is also one of the most difficult uh, analysis in the entire topological uh, photonics uh, simulation uh, part. Uh, so I think our simulation has got over. OK, so for the symmetric case, uh, we'll be checking the band diagram here. So we covered the band diagram analysis and also we covered the topological edge state in this uh, first part. And in the next part, the demonstration will be seeing how. Uh, uh, we, so based on these uh, simulations, uh, we'll be uh, designing the entire uh, um, the waveguide structure. So this the in the interface. So 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 the interface will behave as the waveguide, and we'll see how the
10 hertz signal actually uh, passes. So you can see that for the symmetric case, now see the two bands actually are meeting at k equals to 2, and this k equals to 2 corresponds to the uh, k symmetry point okay, in the built-in zone. So that's why uh, this uh, point actually, uh, it is uh, the band is actually meeting. Now what we'll be doing is that uh, if you take it as 6, 5, and if you take it as 3, 5, so now you are actually breaking it. Okay, so now you are breaking the symmetry. So now the, the band will open. Okay, so I think we need to wait for another, uh, I think, um, seven, six to seven minutes. Uh, so this is the kind of uh, edge state analysis. You can see that how dense is the mesh. Although you might, it might uh, appear that the mesh quality is dense, but you, if you zoom it, you can see that this is the smaller triangle and you can see the mesh actually has divided the smaller triangle into only one, two, three, and four, four parts. So this is not that much kind of dense mesh, okay? But still the meshing uh, quality, uh, if you improve, if you try from here, if you try to improve uh, the meshing quality, the, your uh, computation and time will uh, increase exponentially. So we don't want that kind of uh, complex uh, computations, okay? And uh, I think um, this is more or less uh, about your, okay, so one thing uh, after the simulation of topological elastic, you go to this electric field and click on the surface here. Okay, I need to show you one thing. So this is the kind of, uh, uh, the your uh, the electric field distribution will, it, it will look like you change it to the magnetic field that is the AZ component because T mode we are analyzing the T mode so you just click it on HZ then click it like this okay.
So typically we keep it as finer option uh, mesh quality uh, because this is a single rhombus. So if you uh, if you ever try to increase uh, the uh, the mesh quality also here. So that will not hamper your simulation time. That will not drastically increase. But for topological at state simulation, just make sure that you don't uh, increase the mesh quality uh, to a much higher value. So our simulation has got over. See here uh, in this EMW also at k equals to 2, you can see there are two values. See these two are disc, uh, disc, uh, the, these two are dissimilar values actually. Okay, so you can from there you can calculate the band here also. So now you click on the one dip plot group. So just wait for one minute. So you can see here. So the now you can see the band gap actually has opened, and inside that band gap, uh, an edge state will appear as we have seen uh, in the topological edge state analysis. So this is called the zoom box. If you zoom it here. So you will be able to see the band gap range also. Exact band gap range. What is that exact? Uh, so this is uh, pretty much all about the band diagram analysis and uh, the edge state analysis also. OK, uh, so in the uh, second part, we shall be discussing about uh, the, um, the entire photonic crystal, uh, topological photonic crystal slab simulation where we shall be discussing how uh, the interface will behave as a waveguide and then uh, we can see uh, the input signal will excite the edge state and then the transmission will happen. OK, so we shall be discussing it uh, in details in the second part. OK. So thank you. That will That is all for this lecture. If you have got any query or doubt regarding this lecture, you mentioned uh, simulation demonstration part one and uh, photonic crystal MOOC on the subject line and you can drop an email to me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.